In this video, I'm going to introduce Parasaf JTest and go over how you can validate and test your code using static analysis. This is the user interface for Parasaf JTest. On the left, you can see I have a number of projects that I've created. And at the bottom are tabs which give me results from JTest. I'm going to run static analysis on a few pieces of code that I have here. And this should give you a better understanding of how static analysis works in JTest and how it can be helpful to you. There are two types of static analysis in JTest, rule-based static analysis and flow-based static analysis. In rule-based static analysis, JTest will scan through your code and compare it against a set of rules. If any of those rules are violated, JTest will tell you where it's been violated and how to resolve it. In flow-based static analysis, JTest will go through multiple execution paths to find out if any rule has been violated. Over here, we're going to start with rule-based static analysis. All right, so I'm going to run my customer.java against a rule base here. And the rule base I'm going to run it against is pairs of recommended rules. I'm going to come back and show you the different rule sets we have. Okay, so the test ran and 13 tasks were reported. And let's go into the detail of each of those tasks. When the tasks have been reported, it orders it in terms of severity. So let's take a look at the highest severity tasks. Now, the idea here is that these aren't just simple syntax errors or formatting errors. These are tasks which could cause major issues. So, for example, in my highest severity error, you can see that one of them is regarding a JDBC connection. And this is saying that the JDBC connection is not closed in a finally block. I can double click it and it will show you where the error occurs. And essentially, the error here is that this connection is not closed in a finally block, which could lead to major security issues. And each of these violations have a detailed instruction on what the error is and how you can resolve it. So you can see there's a description for each error. Uh, there's the benefit for resolving it. There is an example of the error and a repair on how to resolve it. That's an example of rule-based analysis in JTAS. Now, what I want to do is show you the different rules that we have. So I'm going to go into my task configuration. So JTAS comes shipped with more than 1,100 rules. And these rules have been divided into certain configurations based on industry standard. So for example, under static analysis, these rules have been grouped together based on industry standards and best practices. For example, Parasaf recommended rules are rules that have been recommended by Parasaf themselves. Some of these rules have been based on best practice books that have been published. And some of them have been based on certain frameworks such as Spring and Hibernate. So let me show you a couple of rules that have been created and what problems these resolve. We already taken a look at JDBC connection errors. We can go into some security errors or we can go into some rules that go over thread and synchronization. So these can essentially resolve things like memory leaks. So you can see these 1100 rules cover a vast majority of common errors. And these aren't just common syntax errors. These are errors which could lead to major issues. So the next thing that I want to cover is essentially flow-based analysis. And that goes under bug detect. And as I talked about it earlier, flow-based static analysis goes through different execution paths to see if any possible error can occur. Let me show you the bug detective rules. For example, under security, it can protect against SQL injection, XML data injection, and the way it works is it goes through different execution paths in your code base and see if there's any possibility of a SQL injection or XML data injection. So let's run some flow-based static analysis. So I have a couple of Java files here. Uh, the first one that I'm going to test against is this division by zero dot Java. And essentially this will result in a division by zero error, but I want to show you how you can use flow-based static analysis to get to that point. So I'm going to run bug detective against this division by zero dot Java. So you can see the task finished and there's one task that was reported. And let's go into that particular task. And so essentially what it's saying here, there's a particular variable here called discounted sum that could possibly be zero. And if you go a little deeper, and if you go a little deeper over here, get overall sum is divided by discounted sum. And so if discounted sum is zero, it will result in a division by zero error. And the way JTA got to this point is essentially it went through different execution paths and you can see the stack trace of how it got here. So let's run another one, uh, one for in SQL injection. 
okay so the task finished and let's go into the tasks over here you got similar information it will give you a full stack trace of how it got to that particular error you can see the error here is under s query and what's happening here is there's a possibility of sql injection and it got to that point again based on this particular stack trace and you can follow it and see how it got to that particular point and that's a brief introduction to jtest and how you can identify and resolve some code errors using static analysis.